Hello, my name is Lee Weingarten. I'm principal of Weingarten Art Group, and I'm consulting director of public art at the University of Houston system. We're at Moore's Opera House this evening to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Frank Stella's monumental euphonia. And I have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Stella this evening. The piece is an icon of American art and particularly of the University of Houston's own public art collection. So, Mr. Stella, welcome to the Moore's Opera House. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I've been here before, but uh, it <laughs> well, seems good. What's it like to walk in here 20 years later? It's a little weird, I have to admit, but uh, it, it seems okay. I mean, it's not as tense as it was 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> there were, it's, it's sort of over now. That then there was a lot to worry about. Does it, does it feel the same to you as it did when you installed the work? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, as I say, it, it, it has a sense of being finished and over with or something. That, you, don't, you know, it's not, I don't have the sense that I could change it a lot or I should change it. Uh, so I'm not so worried. It's, it's a lot more relaxing. <laughs> time, time does that, I guess. How a did, buffer. How did the process um, and, um, and the final installation of, influence your the work that came after this? Well, I mean, it, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, because the working, working with, uh, in the space, in a public space that had such, uh, you know, difficult requirements and uh, things were far away and, and a lot of technical things, getting things up there and making it stick on the ceiling, all those kind <laughs> of everyday uh, problems uh, at the time seemed overwhelming. And uh, so it was really, uh, <clears throat> you know, a, a worrying about uh, a, a specific design problem, uh, you know, what, this shape, that shape, this place, that place. So everything was sort of uh, so, so controlled. So you didn't have, uh, uh, you had to make up your mind and you had to prepare it and go with it. Uh, there wasn't there wasn't much uh, fooling around, and mu not, mu not much opportunity to adjust anything really. I guess that's the problem. And I know that you directed a, a very large team of uh, local artists. Um, do you um, do you still uh, employ that process or? Uh, no, we never we never did that again. Actually, uh, that was unique to to this situation. Uh, you know, to here to Houston, we, we we rented a space, but we had people who had we had done something similar to this in Toronto, uh, for the Princess of Wales Theatre, and the people who had worked in Toronto came and worked here, but they also worked with the students and the people here who would pitch in, and so we were we were in in that sense we were pretty well organized. We had the experience of doing it, but we didn't have the experience of uh, overcoming the uh, slightly more difficult. Uh, surfaces. And when you saw the site, did you immediately know uh, the various elements and, and, and places within the venue that you wanted to activate? No, it was kind of a nightmare. Um, <laughs> no, we built a model uh, and then we simply, you know, banged away at the model uh, thinking about uh, how we could deal with the, diff the spaces. I mean, you know, like on the mezzanine or the balcony out in front, that's pretty easy. You know, you have a long, flat, rectangular surface. You, you can work on it. You don't have to worry too much about it. But what you're going to do up in the pendentives up there uh, is pretty tough. Uh, and so we had to trust uh, the models, uh, which were um, really small. And we didn't have much sense of the uh, curved surfaces of the space. So mm -hmm. it was kind of hit or miss. I mean, either it works or it doesn't. So, and we didn't really know uh, until the end if it was going to work. And then, of course, the simplest solution to that is, of course, to say, oh, it works great. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have preferences uh, as to where your work is shown, be it in a gallery or in a public venue? No, I mean, I think I'm much more. I, I mean, I like the idea if I were to talk about what I've done or be interested in it. Um, I don't think it's too sentimental, but I like the idea 
of uh, being a, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to be a New York painter or a New York artist. <laughs> and so the one man show in New York City was sort of the kind of venue, that was it. Just, you know, you worked and then, you know, uh, you'd show uh, five to six or seven paintings, whatever it was, in a nice, uh, in a nice simple uh, white-walled gallery. And, and that was, and it seemed really, you know, getting it out of your studio, getting uptown, uh, the life of the artist, that, that was sort of the goal. It was, there wasn't really anything else to do. There was nowhere else to go. But I do, do think that, I, I mean, over the years, I mean, I like the progression of the one-man exhibitions that I had mm -hmm. because uh, it seems to me that, uh, you know, about every two years, say, but, uh, but I, I, I think my record of exhibitions of uh, what are called solo exhibitions is pretty good because most of the time I had something relatively interesting to show. <laughs> Probably more than that. We have a couple of questions from some students on campus. I hope you don't mind if I ask them. And one of mm -hmm. them is, um, who are your favorite artists making public art? Yeah, that's a really good question because I never think about public art. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, public art now is seems like a specialty, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and it also seems like a kind of nightmare because uh, um, public art has to compete. Uh, it's it's actually I don't know competing is not quite the right word, but the architecture, the physical spaces available to artists in public art are are not so nice, I mean, to put it simply. And uh, exterior spaces, which are again, surrounded by a kind of architecture or so-called civic plazas and that kind of space, they're really tough on art, they're tough on everybody actually. So I think that that's, it's quite hard. Uh, you know, the ideal situation people would say for large sculpture or something is uh, outdoors or the proper setting or something like that. But you know, competing with mother, mother nature is not so easy either. Sure. So the, the circumstances I find uh, are kind of tough. And I mean, you know, you could be nice about it and say they're challenging. But I mean, I, I don't know if you want to, uh, you know, it's hard to meet those kind of challenges. We are invited to, uh, to activate a site um, does the site impact your work as much as your own sort of vision? Well, this is the, the, the here, it, it, you know, it's kind of obvious that there was no, no compromise. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the site ruled <laughs> and you were uh, driven by it. So uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't much room for, uh, 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 for expression. You had to conform in a way or be active within, within given spaces and difficult ones at that. But that, you know, you, you, you get off by excusing yourself and saying it's uh, challenging. But I don't think that public art in general is very exciting. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, and actually I don't get a lot of uh, offers. I mean, uh, you know, most of these public things are commissions. Sure. And, uh, um, and uh, uh, they're commissions and a lot of them are competitions, but I mean, um, I may have entered some competitions, but I certainly wouldn't anymore. Uh, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say. And the commissions that I've done, I mean, some of them are, you know, uh, you go through the process of the commission and they give you the, and you make the model and this, that, and the other. And then uh, some of the more successful commissions that I've done, I already had the piece. I just fit it into the uh, thing. And yeah. then I'd say, oh, well, that'll be ready in six months. But it was already in the studio. Uh, so when six months later, I say, we've been working on this. It's uh, ready. And then, <laughs> then the, we would install it. But that didn't work so well all the time either. One of the uh, things that we did for uh, up in um, somewhere actually in Delaware, and there was a huge complaint in an IRS building about the piece and they eventually moved it. And uh, the idea, I mean, how do you know what people are going to say or how they're going to react? But the reason that this piece was moved, it was that it was too bright and colorful. And when the people came to work on Monday morning, they were too depressed and they didn't like to be encountered by that much activity of happiness or color. <laughs> And so they moved, the U.S. government and its wisdom moved it. <laughs> Sounds like an unusual reaction. It, yeah, it did surprise <laughs> me a little bit. 
there, but that's what you face. I mean, you don't sure. know. Uh, you know, usually the things are social or political or something, but that was just pure personal aesthetics and uh, feelings. Well, on a lighter note, one of the students wants to know if you still smoke cigars, because there's an anecdote that cigar smoke did somehow figure into the design of some of the elements in the lobby. Well, I, I smoke a little bit, but it's not an anecdote that it figured in. I mean, it, it's very... It's there in a lot of places, but the, uh, the, it, it, it's transformed in, an, in a, a number of fairly straightforward ways. But what I did with the cigar smoke was to blow smoke rings. And when mm -hmm. you blow a smoke ring, if you have uh, conditions with not too much uh, activity or wind, is that the, uh, the ring floats out into the surface and then it, it bifurcates and other uh, smoke rings drop out of it. So it's an interesting process, which we photographed, and that gave us a lot of kind of smoky shapes, but a lot of interesting shapes that we then modeled. And we modeled them, uh, most of the ones here that are modeled in this were modeled uh, uh, graphically. So it's a, uh, it was really a modeling exercise of the, uh, of the result of the uh, smoke rings uh, breaking up. And the last question we have for you is, who did you root for in the 2017 World Series? Yeah, Houston Astros. <laughs> did I get that right? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stella. Appreciate it. Okay. 2019 will be the 50th anniversary of public art at the University of Houston system. And we encourage you to follow us on our website and social media channels at Public Art UHS to keep track of all of the programming and events and installations that will be occurring.